Uh, well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for taking your time off from your busy schedule to attend for this webinar on the Human Rights, Gender and Conflict Studies, uh, Social Justice Perspective, SJP. Uh, with me here today, there is uh, Tafina, who is the current, will be the course or is the course leader for the SJP uh, major. And we also have Jeff Handmaker, who uh, is one of the teaching members of the SJP uh, major. We also have two current students, Serafina and Mana Saviras. Um, without further ado, I will pass on the floor to Dafina, who will give you an overview of what the uh, Human Rights, uh, Gender and Conflict Studies major is all about. Dafina. Thank you very much, Darren. And thank you everyone indeed for joining. I'm very excited to see that you are interested in this major and I'm happy to give you some general information about what the major is and uh, what you can do with it. So let's get started. Um, like um, was just said, we will be giving you a general overview. Um, hopefully we will have some, uh, we will have the students answer some of your uh, most pressing questions. Um, but uh, Jeff and I will try to give a, a general information about the course and what you can expect uh, within the major. So we will talk about what the SJP major is, what some of the subjects are and more of the content. And we'll explain a little bit about for whom SJP is meant and what kind of career trajectories you can expect after finalizing the major. So our SJP or social justice perspective majors falls within the ISS major or uh, masters in development studies. And this development studies is very highly ranked. It's the 11th in the world, according to the QS World University rankings, but it's also number one in the Netherlands. So we would like to see, or we would like to say that our perspective on development is very much also a critical perspective uh, and very engaging with our, our students. And that is also reflected in how we are ranked. So what really the major in general offers is really knowledge and understanding of theories that are relevant to development studies uh, from different perspectives. Um, we will talk a little bit about which type of different lenses we use within, um, within the major. And we offer the opportunity for you to learn how to analyze, how to use these concepts, how to examine them, critique them, and also transform them where necessary. So at the end of this master's, you'll be able to make uh, informed in ju judgments, you'll be able to construct interventions where necessary, and you're able to really uh, communicate in a um, clear way with different audiences, not only with policymakers, but also with stakeholders in the field. And lastly, we really would like to encourage you to also have a creative attitude to not only look at what the status quo is, but also to be reflective and eager to learn and innovate also the practice within development studies. So within this bigger uh, master, uh, we have, of course, the major, which is social justice perspectives. Um, and what really this major brings is a deeper dive into power dimensions into contradictions and where are maybe are some complementarities. We look at how to really understand social justice and what type of different perspective different communities have and try to look at what type of ways we can challenge inequalities and exclusions that we have here. Um, so that is shortly um, what the major is as part of the development studies um, master. Um, but I would also be very much interested to hear from our students to tell a little bit about how they have um, enjoyed it so far and what were some of the reasons for them choosing this major. So Serafim Manasa can share, please. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. It's nice to see you all. My name is Manasa. I am 29 years old and I'm from India. Um, I pursued uh, law for my bachelor degrees and I worked with NGOs in India for six years before coming here. So my interest in gender and conflict goes way back from when I started pursuing law and seeing the law in India for gender, you know, all the conflict and issues that come with it. So 
it's been interesting here learning critical perspectives learning different ideas from different people it's been a journey but we're in the midst of our term two, uh, end of our term two rather. So it's been a good learning curve since we started a few months ago. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Seraphine? Yeah, so um, Seraphine and Akubashe, I'm from Ghana. And I also did sociology major in my undergraduate with linguistics. Um, I have also worked in with NGOs, with governments and international development partners, mainly on issues on sexual and gender-based violence, on sexual and reproductive health, and harmful traditional practices. Um, back from in Ghana. And so we mostly do women empowerment, like new skills and all of that. So I think like this was very much in line SJP with the social justice perspective that we see in our um, daily activities especially like since we engage mostly with grassroots um activism and and identify our groups and communities so sjp was i uh, was really in line with what i was passionate about and what i was doing i felt like when i came here iss gives you the opportunity to be like to meet different people from different backgrounds. You are very diverse for our badge. You are from 50 different nationalities. So you can imagine you get ideas and perspectives from different um, backgrounds. So it's also a, a good learning curve, um, which makes you critical, open-minded, and you get the networks and other skills from other colleagues. So that was why I chose to come here. And also ISS is the number one in, 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 in Europe, actually. <laughs> So yeah, that's why I came to ISIS. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so later on, we'll hear a bit more about, for instance, the courses that they've picked so far. Um, so we will share more about that later. Um, so this is the general overview, right? Looking at power, looking at uh, social justice and inequalities and exclusions. But what does that practically mean when we look at, for instance, courses? Um, so within SJP, within social justice perspectives, you can have, uh, we have different specializations, so different focal points uh, within the social justice perspective that you can focus on. The first one is women and gender studies. There you can take courses such as feminist perspectives on gender and development. So really looking at what does it mean from a feminist perspective to understand development, to see what type of needs come to light when you take that feminist perspective and what type of interventions can you, um, can you do in relation to that. Um, the other specialization is conflict and peace studies which focuses on uh, yeah, different uh, humanitarian situations. One of the courses that you can pick within that is violent conflict, co violent conflict media and the politics of representation. So that looks at how uh, media plays a role in constructing images of different communities, which then can be affected by conflict. Um, and lastly, we have the specialization around human rights. And here we have uh, one of the example courses you could take would be in human rights law and society. So not looking at um, just law in the books, but also looking at how um, law um, comes out in practice and how different communities use the law to get their social, um, social causes or goals met. So these are a little bit of the courses in relation to the specializations that you could pick. Um, some of the other courses which might are relevant to, um, to what you would like to do, because you actually can design uh, parts of your courses, parts of your education in the way that really fits your needs and wants. Uh, some of the courses that we also have focus on children, youth, and social movements and different de decolonial perspectives. So for instance, we have participatory action research, which really actively engages um, local communities um, and tries to not only look at methods um, that we use as the status quo, but also to see what type of different methods are out there and how we can really also do justice to communities through the research that we do. Um, there's also When Disasters Meet Conflict, which um, is a MOOC, 
um, that you can take in relation to, um, yeah, really doing active um, engagements and trying to understand what communities on the ground are experiencing, uh, which is also something that is reflected in the social justice and transitions lab, where you look at different examples of how um, different uh, researchers have used social justice perspectives in their um, in their research. Um, now, I've given you a little bit of the courses, and now let's talk about who is teaching all of this. Um, so we have a very interesting uh, teaching team, which is really um, also as diverse as the students are, uh, with a regional representation of different places as well. Um, so we have Osaba Ikaza, um, who is probably on your left, left up. Next to that is uh, Karen Arts, we have Case Picard, we have uh, Sri Sati, um, then below we have Shame uh, Shamika, uh, myself, Jeff, and Silka. Um, so all of these staff members have different um, focus, focal points. For instance, um, Professor Hosalba Ikaza focuses on decolonial praxis, um, Professor Karen Arts focuses on children and development studies. So each of the staff members really brings something in. We are an interdisciplinary uh, team um, and we really try to, uh, to meet the needs that um, our student body has. Um, so far for the, for the team, let's now look a little bit at the specific courses and how um, the, or how the major, what the major looks like. Um, and I think uh, I will come to the students in a moment where they can share what they have chosen. But the major starts off with an introductory program where you get to choose also some foundational courses. Um, and these foundational courses really uh, create the foundation on which the next courses can be taken. So for instance, given an introduction into sociology, if you haven't, um, if you don't have that, or in economics, um, so really to make sure that we create a level playing field for students to um, really engage with the next steps um, within the course at, within the courses and the major. Um, now in the middle, you can choose some mandatory um, courses and there's also the research paper preparation. And the research paper is what we call our master thesis. Um, because we really like to encourage students to actively uh, conduct um, original research and to really go out into the field. So we start preparing that um, already uh, right before uh, January. And it, that will be ex executed um, starting July. Um, then in the middle, so between January and July, there is a general course on climate change and development in uh, the Anthropocene. This course has been added recently because we really saw that there is a need for students to be able to tackle um, issues around climate change. It's become such um, a dominant issue that it actually um, influences everything that we would want to do and want to accomplish through development. And therefore this course has been um, added um, recently to our, um, to our courses. Now let's see what we're also doing for the RP. So the research paper, which is where we are right now. And maybe the students can um, talk a little bit about um, the courses that they've taken so far and what they would now like to do for their RP, the research paper. Okay. okay. So some of the subjects that we get to choose is in term two. And I what I'm currently doing now is one of my subjects is on feminist perspectives that is taught by Sri, and the other subject is on conflict transformation uh, taught by Shamika, and I also have decoloniality in development research by Rosalba. So it's it's this term has been most interesting to say the least. It's been uh, helping me think a lot about my RP. I think the direction I'd want to take is feminist peace building, but you know, it's with every subject, I think with everything that's thought, it's always going to be dynamic shifting. So before July, when we need to finally put our word down on what we want to do, I'm looking forward for next term subject also, for which I have mobilization of human rights and participatory action research. I'm hoping to combine elements, you know, from all the subjects to create a, an, an interesting RP, but the, these subjects have definitely 
added more theoretical knowledge for me from the practice that I had before because working you know for six years gives you a different reality to what we study in classrooms some of it contrasting some of it makes sense so it's it, it's helped me in many ways to I think also understand myself understand what I want to do why I want to do development and yeah <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Seraphim? Okay, so currently I'm um, taking human rights, law and society. Um, also, which is <laughs> uh, co-taught by Daphina and Jeff. Um, I'm also taking gender at work in development. It's actually a social policy course. And also um, I'm taking... Um, my third course, I, I'm, I'm taking multi, multi methods uh, for research methods and also the. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so ISS actually has like, um, you have the opportunity to actually take a course or more courses outside your um, major elective, like I'm taking gender at work in development and humanitarian action. So you can either choose to specialize in your major or you can choose other elective from other courses. You don't necessarily have to specialize. So I am not specializing in any area, but you have the opportunity to do so. So um, I, when I came, I had an idea of like what I wanted to do, but as the uh, firm pass by, you actually develop new ideas and all that. Sometimes you get confused or information overload, but the lecturers and your mentors who are assigned to you actually help and direct you on what to do, or you can talk to them and then you find your area of interest. For now, I'm looking at um, working on coordination of um, development organizations on providing aid or assistance to vulnerable groups. So I realized like back home where I used to work, there's lack of coordination. So I'm trying to fill in that gap. That's what I'm planning to do for my research topic now. Um, so yeah, basically that's, that's it. Thank you. Um, the, um, I just wanted to add something about specialization. As uh, Serafin rightly said, you do not need to specialize. However, if you do specialize, uh, your, re your research paper has to be based on the specialization. So just a word of advice. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Darren, for that, uh, for that addition. Um, so Seraphin also mentioned something else, which is the support system that we have here. Um, so everyone is assigned to uh, a mentor, and there's also a welfare office to make sure that students um, are supported through their studies. Maybe, Jeff, you could also share something about your experience as a mentor um, with the students. And then after that, I can talk a little bit more about different um, uh, topics and different content. Uh, sure. Uh, good afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you happen to be. And so indeed, as Tafina said, I'm uh, Jeff Handmaker. I'm Associate Professor in Legal Sociology and a member of the teaching team in SJP, although like Tafina, I also teach uh, in other courses. Um, and I'm a mentor uh, of uh, five students. Um, they're from all around the world. Uh, the purpose of this mentor group is really to be a kind of a first port of call in the event that students face uh, difficulties, challenges in relation to their academic studies. Um, we can also refer to the uh, welfare office if students need uh, help and support. We have a wonderful uh, set of colleagues in our welfare office who can help uh, who and do help students with a range of different uh, issues and concerns. Um, but I think the person, people most uh, important to ask about the role of the mentor groups would actually be the students themselves. So I would invite uh, the students to share their reflections on the role of the mentor groups. Yeah, uh, for me, my mentor meeting was the first I had in ISS on the first day before anything started. And some of the people I've met in my mentor group are the closest friends I have here, one I live with. So I feel you meet people you never would have had the chance to meet, you sort of get aligned on issues or ideas you know together as a group there's someone guiding you on what you need to do it doesn't feel entirely lost coming here and starting having that support i think there is guidance on what to expect next how to go about it there's always been openness from anyone within the institute to talk you know 
to pick their mind. You have any question, you want to just chat with them, get a coffee with them. It's it's been it's been very interactive, very communicative with anyone in ISS, regardless of them being a student, a professor, or anybody. So I think there's that sense of community that sort of builds automatically and a lot of students live around the campus so that also adds value to the fact that you know we become one family in 15 months and considering we're working on topics and issues that also challenge everything the way we think the way we do things you know we talk about a lot of difficult conversations so having a support system has definitely been helpful in navigating I feel many bad days <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, Thanks so I, I second Manasa. Um, for me, my mentor, my other colleagues are also from very diverse background, like from Asia, from America, from Africa, <laughs> and like the US. So you they, these are the people that usually are your first points like of friendship or um, to get information when you are lost because when you come here you're overwhelmed with a lot of things you're confused the instructions are there but sometimes you're not it's not really clear so you can talk to your mentors who will guide you on this for me my mentor group we meet every month talk about our problems I, either personal from the hostel or academic related so you get to share and have this support system from your other colleagues which is very helpful. So, and you can call on them at any time. And as Manasa said, it doesn't matter who the person is, either your mentor or no, you can, ISS staff are very approachable. You can talk to anybody at all. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so indeed what we often do with the mentor groups is also to make sure that we help you pick the courses. If you have some questions about it, because of course you can see the title and maybe the synopsis, but I, as a staff member can, um, for instance, connect you to the, to the teacher to really help you understand what the course is about. And I can make sure that you, for instance, make sure that you have all of the different uh, study points that you uh, meet the requirements that are uh, necessary for, of course, getting your uh, degree in the end. So um, let's now go to some of the courses that indeed you can take at the beginning in term one. These are the courses that help you kind of set the level playing field to help you throughout the rest of the course. So we advise students to take um, intermediate courses on courses that they, or on topics that they haven't been familiar with. Um, and then the advanced courses on things that they, for instance, already did their bachelor in. Um, and that way we try to make sure that there is a more of a level playing field because there are so many different topics and so many different disciplines that come by um, that we want to make sure that you all have, um, yeah, a good, a good level um, playing field in that sense. Um, and what is also interesting- uh, Daphina, find... sorry, sorry, Daphina, sorry to uh, interject. Yes, uh, Is there uh, consequences if, a student choose intermediate, advanced, is there consequences? Uh, does it affect their marks or can they move on to the next term? Um, well, what happens is that, um, of course, your mentor helps you to pick out which courses are um, connected the best to your previous education and help you for, for the rest of the your, your time at ISS. Um, what happens is, yeah, you make sure that um, that it connects to your background. Therefore, it's easier for you to to complete the courses. Of course, you can challenge yourself and take an advanced course somewhere, but that is, of course, um, maybe a risk that you can take. If you're okay with that, you can do that. Um, again, we as mentors and and teachers try to advise you, but of course, you yourself are um, are responsible and are. Uh, understanding of what your goals are in general. So you make the decision in the end um, on, on these courses. Thank you, Daphne. Thank you. Um, so um, we've talked about term one. So that's a little bit on the basis on, on how to get you to term two, where you get to choose other topics. But I thought it was also useful to also talk about the end of your um, the last uh, um, terms which is term four, where we have the research paper. So this allows you with all the information that you've gained throughout your courses throughout the year to now design your own research. Um, and that means that you can do original research. You have been prepped for it. Um, and now it's the time for you to start doing that. 
So here you can see an overview of some of the topics that have been chosen by, um, by students in the past. If you actually go to the ISS website, you can see um, uh, an overview of actually all these um, these research papers and you can actually read them. So if you're really interested, I'll, um, I would advise you to, to check that out. But here you can see topics on different issues around the environment, around um, diaspora groups within the context of Europe, but also outside of Europe, such as Ethiopia, Colombia, Ghana. So you see that students really design the type of research that they are interested in um, and that they would like to contribute to um, in the longer run. We also have next to all of these amazing courses, other activities that we take, such as social activities like um, boat trips, boat outings, because here in The Hague, we have a lot of um, a lot of panels, um, which you can in the summer have a really nice um, experience in. And we also try to visit a lot of the international organizations that are around here, because as you might know, um, the Hague is um, the center of international law, of peace and justice as well. So we try to, for instance, visit the International Criminal Court, the International Court of Justice, the different NGOs that are here. And they also often allow for um, things such as internships that you can apply for with these different organizations. Um, also, the Parliament of the Netherlands is right or seated here in The Hague. So there's lots of international things going on, but also local. Um, the Hague is also one of the most diverse cities in the Netherlands. Um, and here you can also connect with local communities if you if that is what you are interested in. So I think that that is shortly kind of a summary of what we have to offer here um, within SJP. Um, and now the question is, of course, for whom is it meant? Um, if you are interested in, in this course, in these type of courses around social justice, um, this is definitely a master that you, you should consider. It offers you a lot of opportunities in the future. We have different students have, that have ended up with NGOs, but also with governments, local governments, um, and also are active within the international field of governance. So think about the European Union or the United Nations. Um, within our alumni network, you can see where some of our students have ended up, and it's wonderful to see that we still are in contact with them. So often when we have different activities, we can reach out to these uh, um, alumni. So I think this um, offers you a great opportunity. Um, if you have more questions, um, feel free to contact us. And also within the chat, I think Darren will direct some more questions towards us for the last couple of minutes. Um, Jeff, is there anything else you would like to add? I'm sorry, I've <laughs> talked. No, for I, I, time. I, I think you gave a very, very good, wonderful overview of the course. Uh, there's obviously a lot that you can say, and I think that the most interesting things uh, are always going to come from the students who've gone through that journey. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that uh, I think you've heard basically the basics about what this program is. Um, having been at the ISS for the past six. Years, um, I can say that it's it's really a pretty wonderful community of uh, faculty, of administrators, and obviously the wonderful students who come through our doors every year. Um, so yeah, you'll be part of a community. Um, our faculty is in one big building, as you can see in the background here, um, and uh, we are. Uh, with, there's something called the Butterfly Cafe, which is a place where people can meet and engage. Um, and uh, there are, we're right in the city center, so you can literally go uh, and explore uh, the wonders of The Hague, which, as Daphina says, is a very diverse city. Um, there's a lot going on here, and, um, and we're also very well connected to other uh, European capitals, other cities in the Netherlands, and we, there are a number of students who, the more adventurous students who go off and explore a number of these places. So, yeah, I think if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to pose them. But... Well, thank you so much, Jeff, Daphina, Serafina, and Manessa for your time uh, explaining what the uh, social justice perspective major is all about. So with that, I think we can conclude our webinar session for the SJP major. So thank you so much, Dr. Daphina, and also Jeff uh, for participating. Thank you, Manasa and Serafine. 
I wish you good luck in your assignments and your exams uh, that is happening this week. Uh, all the best to you. Um, again, any questions, please send, send me an email, study at ISS.nl. So have a nice uh, day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I hope to see you in the Hague. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs>